Hi, it's Corrine today for our Wild Orchid Crafts, and we are making a little mini album in a box. This was inspired by the Lori Whitlock 5x4 mini album with a box die. I don't own that die, so I thought I would make it um, a take off of it so that way you don't have to have the die in order to make this. And it's a little box that holds a little mini album, perfect for like little Instagram photos. And they do have a similar, she has similar stuff on the online silhouette store. I don't believe she has this exact die or cut file on there, but she does have similar stuff. But I thought for those of you that don't own a Cameo that want to make this can make this alongside of me. So I added some of the gorgeous Wild Orchid Craft Flowers. I will have all of these listed in the description box and I use their beautiful seam binding for the closure. So I hope you stay tuned and we'll make this from start to finish. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, so here is everything that we're gonna need to cut out and we are going to do this on camera as well, but I just wanna show you up front in case you wanted to um, write down these measurements if you're going to follow along. So the first thing for the outside of the box, we're going to need two pieces. The first piece is five and nine sixteenths by five. And on the five and nine sixteenths side, we're going to score in three quarters inches on both sides. Again, we're gonna do this step by step. The second piece for the outside box is six by 11 sixteenths by five and nine sixteenths. Again, on the five and nine sixteenth inch side, we're going to score in three quarters inch on both sides. Then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and on the six and 11 sixteenths inch side, from the left, we're gonna score in at five inches and five and three quarters inches. And then we're going to cut along those score lines up to that second score line. Okay, so I'll set those aside. For the album, the inside album pieces, you're gonna need three pieces, all of them measuring three by seven and an eighth. The first piece is gonna be our largest piece. They're gonna go down in size in order to um, accommodate folding over each other. So the largest piece is 10 by 11 sixteenths. And I'll, um, for, on the 11 16 side, we're going to, from the left, go in and score at five inches on all three of these. And then on this large one, we're gonna score at five and 11 sixteenths. The second size down is, again, three and seven eighths by 10 and a half. From the left, we're scoring at five inches and five and a half inches. And the third piece, which you can add more if you want, but I'm doing three, is three and seven eighths again. This one is by 10 and three eighths long scoring in from the left at five inches and five and three eighths. For the outside of the box, we're gonna need a decorative piece, which we will cut out from pattern paper. We're gonna need two pieces, one for the front of the box, one for the back of the box. And these are going to be sized at four and three quarters by three and three quarters. This is the decorative piece for the front of the album. You can do one for the back of the album as well and all the pages if you want. This one measures four and three quarters by three and five eighths. I haven't decided um, if I'm gonna do all the inside pages, so we'll just do that when it comes. And then this piece is going to be a decorative spine piece for the outside of our album pages. This is not necessary, but I think it looks pretty. Um, like Lori's die. And this one measures three and seven eighths by three and three sixteenths. And from the left, so this is the three and three sixteenths, and then it's three and seven eighths tall. So we'll put it in our scoreboard at the three and three sixteenths, and from the left, we're gonna score over at one and three sixteenths and two inches. And then we're just going to place holes in the middle. Okay, and how we do that is each page is a little bit different sized, as you know. They're gonna be a little bit different in sizes. Let me show you here. 
when you hold them up to each other, they're going to look like this. So you're going to have to measure each album page separately. And what I did is I came in about three quarters of an inch and I marked my papers. I will be using these as my guide, so I don't. if you want to make a guide first, you don't have to do it this way. I marked in about three, three fourths of an inch on this side. I flipped it around. I marked in three fourths of an inch and gave myself a little tick mark with a pencil. And then I took my centering ruler and found the center of my page and I marked that. And that's how I knew I put a, a line down and that's how I knew how to get those holes. So again, we will go over all of this as we go. And lastly, to put little pieces on the outside of your box, if again, I will be doing these in pattern paper. You're gonna need two pieces that are four and three quarters by nine sixteenths. Those will be for the side of the box. And the outside bottom of the box, you'll need a piece that is three and six eighths by 9 sixteenths as well. So let's set all of this aside and we will work on one piece at a time or one part of the box at, at a time. The first thing I like to work on is the outside of the box. So let me get my paper trimmer. I'm using heavyweight black cardstock or I should say medium weight. It's 65 pound paper so this is a good weight for this and being that um, I'm cutting my first piece at 6 and 11 16 the 6 inches is right where this piece folds out so I have a little bit of a hard time being able to read exactly where 11 16 is so I'm just going to mark that first with my ruler since my ruler has 16 inches And now I need five and nine sixteenths. Which is going to be the first tick line after five and a half. Okay, I'll set that aside and now I'm going to cut my second piece of the box. And this one I need at five and nine sixteenths by five. So I'm going to cut it at 5 and 9 sixteenths. By 5. Normally I do most of all my cutting first, but just in case you're trying to follow along and you've never made one like this before, I will go ahead and do the score marks now to make it easier. So the first one I'm going to start with is my smaller piece. Okay, this one is 5 and 9 sixteenths by 5. So we're going to place it in the scoreboard at the 5 and 9 sixteenths, so the longer side, and we're going to score it at 3 quarters inch on both sides. So the easiest way is just score it at 3 quarters inch, flip it around 180 degrees, and do 3 quarters inch. Okay. So now I'll set that aside and we're going to work on our second piece of the box. And we're going to set it in on the 5 and 9 sixteenths and we're going to score it 3 quarters inch on both sides. The same thing we just did. So 3 quarters inch. I'm going to flip it all the way around and do 3 quarters inch. Now we're going to flip it on the 6 and 11 16 inch side, so the longest side. And from the left, we're going to go over to the 5 inch mark and score, and the 5 and 3 quarter inch mark and score. Next thing we want to do is cut out our bottom piece here. We're going to cut uh, along this score line up to the second score line. So 
So again, I'm going to cut up the score line to that second score line and then follow that score line on the side. Okay, so this is what you should have left. We can throw those pieces away. And now let's quickly assemble our box before we move on to anything else. Go ahead and crease on those score lines. Use your bone folder, make sure you have a good crease. Okay, and with our pieces folded down, we're going to add tape, which I like to use actually wet glue on one of the tabs and we'll adhere them together. I'm using Scotch Quick Dry and I like to make sure I have enough glue to make sure it's completely glued down. So now you simply want to take this fold and match it to the other one without going over that score line but you do want to match up the top of your box. You want to make sure that matches nicely. So using wet glue gives you a second to adjust it if you need to adjust it. And then just really press it down and make sure it's adhered well. Okay, now flip it over and you can fold over your box on that first score line and we're going to add our adhesive to this tab and then fold it over to glue it down. So again, I'm going to make sure I have plenty of glue you don't want so much that it seeps out the sides. Sometimes that's hard to avoid, but if you can, try to avoid it. And now I'm simply just folding this over, making sure that the top is lined up well. I'd rather my top lined up perfectly because the bottom we can adjust somewhat if we need to by, by cutting a little off. So again, I'm pressing that down, making sure it's glued very well. And now here is our box. Okay, and now this part we simply will fold up and there's one of two ways. Um, so now this is meant to tuck in the bottom and glue down. You can do it one of two ways. You can tuck it in the bottom and glue it down or you can glue it over the top if you're planning on adding decorative paper over the top. So I'm just looking to see which way looks best. And I think I'm going to tuck mine on the inside. So again, using wet adhesive, you want to make sure this is glued down well so when you add your album pages they don't catch on anything. So if this is completely glued down, you won't have to worry about that. And what I'm going to do is kind of get it set where I need it. And then I will run my bold fold, bone folder, excuse me, on the inside to really press that down. Press it a few times, make sure it hasn't moved. And if you're happy with it, press it down again. Okay, so that's all there is to the outside of our box besides decorating it. So the next thing, I'll set that aside. The next thing I wanna work on is the album pages. All three of the album pages are three and seven eighths inch tall. So I'm, that's the first thing I'm going to do is cut them down to three and seven eighths inches. I'm cutting three pieces to three and seven eighths. Okay, now we want to individually cut though. The largest one is going to be 10 and 11 sixteenths. Okay, 
set that one aside. The next one we're doing is going to be 10 and a half inches. Set that one aside. And thirdly, we're doing 10 and 3 eighths. So now we're going to score them on the 10 and 3 eighths. From the left, we're going to score in at 5 inches and 5 and 3 eighths. Again, set that one aside. The 10 and a half inch long one from the left we're going to score in at five inches and five and a half. And lastly, we are taking the 10 and 11 16th inch and we're going to score at five inches and five and 11 16th. My scoreboard does not have 1 16th inches so I'm going to mark it with a pencil using my ruler. Again I'm finding 5 and 11 sixteenths. I've marked that and now I will place it on my scoreboard and score it. So next thing we want to do is find the center and mark our holes. For time's sake, I'm going to use mine as a template, but let me just show you what I did. I used my ruler. I came in just sort of wherever the middle, it looks like it's the middle. I came in three quarters inch and marked it. Okay, I did that on both sides three-quarter inches. Then I found the center of my paper along where that mark is. Let me find the center here. Okay, so here's the center of my paper. So now I want to mark the center. Okay, and you only have to do that on one side. Then you can use your ruler as a guide and mark down the entire thing showing where the center is. Okay, and now you simply want to take your crocodile and punch where these two lines intersect. Let me show you. There you go. You want to mark right where those two lines intersect. And you want to do that for all three pieces, being that they are a little bit different in size. So I'm using my Big Bite Crocodile. And you should have something like that. For time's sake, I'm just going to use my, my templates and cut them out that way. Okay, so now we have all three pieces. So I have to apologize because as I was filming I noticed that my camera was not filming and so it, I couldn't shut it down. I ended up having to take the battery out of it and, and do a hard shut down that way and because of that I ended up losing footage. So I'm just recreating what I'm where I left off and what I did. I had the three pieces of album here and I simply folded along the score lines. Again, you're going to have a, a large, medium, and small. So fold along all your score lines. So really the only thing that is missing from this, now that I'm 
um, redoing this is me doing this part and also adding on the pattern paper on the front and back cover. So again, I folded all of my score lines, match them up to have the smallest, then the medium, and the largest. Okay, and you simply want to cut out your pattern paper. I'm just gonna use white paper since I have some sitting here. You wanna cut out your pattern paper to add to the front and back cover. So the size that you need for that is four and three fourths by three, three and five eighths. And this will be the size of your paper for all the inside pages if you want to cover the inside pages. So four and three quarters by three and five eighths. The other piece I cut was for the spine piece, the decorative piece. This is going to be three and seven eighths by three and three sixteenths. So now we would want to add our front and back cover. I'm just quickly going to use glue. In the real project, I used um, ATG tape, but just to quickly recreate this. So add that on your front and back cover. Okay, and then we're going to put our decorative spine piece on. I'm going to use my scoreboard for this. On the 3 and 3 16th side, you want to score it coming from the left 1 and 3 sixteenths. I'm going to mark that with my pencil since I don't have, since my scoreboard doesn't have sixteenths. So 1 and 3 sixteenths. and then at two inches. Okay, and fold over on that. This would be the time if you wanted to use a decorative edge punch. I used a scallop edge punch on the finished product. And now, you want to glue that on. Again, this would be decorative paper. So I'm going to glue it on, which I actually did use wet adhesive when I did this. Make sure to get glue along the entire thing. Just make sure that's on there well. This of course would be decorative paper. Same with these two pieces. These would be decorative paper. Okay, now flip that over and use that as your guide to punch your holes. And this is what we have. And let me show you from the actual design. This is what we have. So now, I used seam binding on mine from Wild Orchid Crafts for a bow, but for this quick reenactment, I guess you could call it, I'm going to use crochet twine. So now you want to put them all together, match up your holes, and thread your ribbon, your twine, whatever you're going to use.
I will tie a knot for time's sake. Again, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. So this is your finished little book. Then what I did do off camera that you don't see is went in and added pattern paper to all of the inside pages. And again, I use the exact same size as the front, four and three quarters by three and five eighths. So that's all there was to it, to putting this book together. Now I will put it in fast play and I do have the footage on that to show you how I decorated this cute little box. Thanks so much for watching. Check out the links in the description box. You'll find all the links for this gorgeous Waldorf Craft product. Thanks for watching.